Okay, now it's a six scale, November 17th. The link to the agenda, we added in chat. Okay, and please add yourself as an attendee. Okay, um, for the agenda today, um, we're gonna look at the periodic results now that we're seeing the jobs pass again. And it's just the um, the, uh, the periodic is passing for the performance job, not the dedicated cluster. Um, so we'll go over the we'll go over the periodic. The dedicated cluster is has some additional work that needs to be done. We need to. Brian mentioned that we need to up, do some upgrades there, and it's running Kubernetes one twenty one. We so we need to upgrade Docker to Containerd and a few other things and get to a new Kubernetes. Which means a new CentOS. So a bunch of things need to change up to get this back to a healthy state. So while that's going on, we'll, we'll keep looking at the regular performance jobs now that the now that we have enough memory to to run everything. So <clears throat> let's just look at one of these. So we have uh, last time we didn't get a chance to actually look at the changes that were made. Uh, we have three checks. Let's take a look. All right, there we go. Okay, so first check um, is a regular density test. And then second check is the, This is the new density test with VMs. And then this one should be with, third one should be with um, the instance types. Okay. All right, let's take a look. I think we'll start with the second one. This is this one of the new ones. So this is a hundred VMs. We should see, actually what I'm gonna do, let me copy. Um, maybe I could split screen, maybe not actually because I want to do this side by side. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to open same job. And we're going to go half and half. So I want to compare the, the first job to the other ones. So then two new ones. All right, there we go. All right, job number one. Okay, here we go. So job number one, and then job number two. Okay, two on the left, one on the right. Okay, so let's see here. Create events count. Quite a bit more, okay. Create pods count, that looks good. What we expect. Go to big map. Okay, points. Okay. So it's like about double the amount of endpoints. Interesting. Get nodes a little bit more. Doesn't look like much of a correlation though. Less nodes. I don't see less nodes. Okay. CDIs, these are all low. Let's we'll skip these. Let's get big maps. Let's daemon sets. Let's cube verts. So are those are these values from the uh, instance type reconciler? No, this is um how can I scroll? This is from um this is from the this is creating VMs, I believe. With, so without an instance type. The, the third job is with an instance type. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just wondering why why we have different values if it's the same, uh, the left and right is the same. So the, okay, so the, well, the difference is that we're, doing, we're launching VMIs, there's no VMs. This is launching VMs, which is and then starting them so it gets VMIs. So there's one little step in between, but 
we shouldn't see any difference. Um, okay. Well, I guess I guess we should. Well, I guess we might. So, like, maybe that's what this is. So, like, maybe that's what create events because I guess this might include um, creating the VM and then the VMI. So, I mean, it, it's look it look looks to be roughly one to one. I mean, I think it would be. Why is my? I, I don't know why it's eight to one. I, I don't know about that. I don't know why that it's that that seems high, but I, I don't know. That's something we can take a note of. And here's another one. Like here's he's also like get endpoints. It looks like we do two endpoints for the number of grades, I guess. And here it looks like we're doing four. I mean that that seems reasonable. This one, this one's weird. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead. Let me go down to some more interesting ones. Patch pods count. This looks like it's got some activity. Patch pods count. Okay, so like roughly one to one. Patch pod. Yeah, one. Okay, so it's also one to one. That's pretty good. Patch first machine instances. Okay, so it's a lot higher here. So our threshold is. Um, I think it's two to one. Yeah, it's two to one. So 257. Here we're, we have 157. So it's almost a perfect one to one. Looks like here we're well below one to one. So our threshold ratio is about 0.3, and we're over one with VMs. That's interesting. Update endpoints. Here's endpoints again. I don't know what. Oh, I guess it, yeah, I don't I don't know actually why this is the case. Now it's in here this one again is higher. It's about it's almost double again, which is interesting. Update virtual machine instances also higher. Still within the thresholds, but it's like it takes twice as many updates. Uh, let's look at our running create to running performance is almost identical. That actually looks really good. Yeah, that, that looks really good. So performance wise looks great. The number of API calls that it's a little strange. So let me write these down. So the, the suspect ones like this one, this one's so this one went from that's that isn't that expected to be higher? Uh, I don't know. Well, so what do you think? Like, what do you what? Yeah, go ahead. We are reconciling virtual machine instances there, right? And on the right, we are just creating uh, VMs, right? So, um, if if on the left we are reconciling uh, virtual machine instances and then making them in sync with the state of the underlying VM, then I would assume all the state being copy pasted, uh, this metric will will go high because like as VM changes its state, it will update the uh, the VMIs and and this counter keeps ticking. So what I was thinking was, what I was thinking was, is that we, every time that the VM, well, so when the VM, I'm trying to think of the VM's states. So the, v, the VMI's state should be independent, right? Like the, it has its own state transitions and it'll be updated by the controller. So I guess the question is, maybe this is what you're getting at, is that if we see a change on the VM, then we need to go and update the VMI. What I am wondering is what that would be. What would change on the VM that we need to go and update the VMI? Oh, hold on, um, sorry, I got confused. So just to be sure, VMI is the pod analogous and VM is the replica set analogous. Is that 
yeah like a yeah like the deployment or okay. yeah yeah okay. yeah right. sorry right. i i think my mental model was wrong i was thinking it the other way around where vm okay. is replica set and vm is the um uh, yeah okay okay please neglect what i said um, well i mean i we need we need so I, i'm kind of um well i'm i mean it, it's a possibility i mean I, i don't know like i i'm wondering because so what i wouldn't so i wouldn't expect it but i mean maybe that i mean i don't know how to explain this like the so we we've seen increase it's not a perfect like well it yeah it's not a it perfect ratio right close yeah it's like it's almost it's almost twice it's like one in a little bit more okay. like it's it's like it's a little it's like it's almost like maybe we're we're running into some conflicts or something maybe this is really this one's interesting i i think this one's really interesting because i guess like what i would expect is that this would be the same so let me add a note for this because I, i think i think this should be the same so we're it's like i don't know it's like 80% higher or something like that so um theoretically all the v- vm controller does is um it takes the spec template in the vm and creates the uh virtual machine instance for it right and then whatever it's uh the vmi state uh, is it will c- copy and update the vm state accordingly does that sound right um yeah that that does but the they have different they have slightly different states so um like there's well uh, the vm so the vmi has all its like it's it's running whatever it's that it has the the runtime states the vm i don't think the vm has any i i think it's just a um there's configurations on it it's like yeah. yeah i don't think it does i i think it i i'll still check i don't think it does it's like a synopsis like the it's like the vmi status is like whole descriptive and then from that some of the fields it takes and just like available vms and and things like that like it will be much shorter and crisp It'll like i don't like if you for instance i i'm i think if you if you start a vm it it's right it starts a vmi but i but i don't think it changes the vm's state for instance like it changes the object the vm object like it just edits the vm object and you know makes it started but i don't i don't think it updates the state i could be wrong but i i think it but either way though um this is the vmi updates and so the vmi is the one that's like transitioning between the phases and so then it would then go back and update the vm so we would see that we would see like an update of virtual machine i don't see an update or any sort of call met that or many calls to virtual machines maybe we're missing them cuz i don't see that many because there should be like we should see a so let's see list oh, for two instances line 2421 okay so here's a list but there should be like um but i don't see any up any changes like patch whatever to virtual machines like they're not being updated. So I think what's happening is the virtual machines are being created and running with the running uh, I need an example. Um this should be one here. Yeah. Where is the 
or the docs. First finishing instance of a partition. And strategies. Okay. Here they are. Always on the here we go. Yeah, so there's no there's no state in here. Like we so we say run start always. That means it's gonna always start a, a VMI. So it's like um, it's like, it's like the, the domain YAML of a VM or of a guest, I guess. Yeah, but I, I I suspect what is happening is once this temp once the VMI is created from this template, um the VM controller will like relay all the state back to the uh, VM status. So I just did a kubectl explain VM dot status and I see a bunch of fields. Conditions okay. created, ready, restore in progress, snapshot in progress, start failure, state change request, volume request and volume snapshot status. So I assume okay. like, all of these information is relayed back and forth. So what's the, we said there's a start, there's a start condition. Yeah. Uh, there is a created field and then there is a ready field. Um, and then there is start failure. So if there are failures in starting and yeah, these are the three fields for that, that are close to like start and then there, there are conditions. Okay. Yeah, I can copy this for reference. Well, so I guess the, well, I don't see any of the, I don't see any of the operations for virtual machines. Yeah, that's surprising. I, I wonder if those are being missed. Could be. Okay, I, I, I don't know, we'll have to think about that one. So we'll assume that they're out there somewhere, but the, um, anyway, the ones that we do have though, yeah, I mean, here's another one like patch virtual machine instance counts. Another good one. That doesn't make, I mean, I'm not sure how to reason this one. So this is patch virtual machine instance. We are doing almost many times more, like three times as many. Yeah, I mean, we're almost at the threshold for this. So that's, that's, that's interesting. I mean, this one's the, I think that one's, that one's kind of fascinating. I don't know, but this one, it's not quite a perfect relationship. It might just be that we're getting some, we're getting some requests that are we're getting some collisions or something. Cause it seems like we're getting some through and some of them, you know, maybe we're just, you know, some of them aren't or just colliding or getting some sort of HTTP error on some of them. But these though, this is, this is kind of surprising. You know, maybe it takes three patch requests when you're dealing with VMs as opposed to, well, actually, so looking at this, so this is kind of, so this is third, so this is not even at the threshold. So this is not even at the one, it's not even at a one-to-one -one count. So normally we don't patch. So normally we don't patch VMs a whole lot we we update them about five times throughout their life cycle we don't patch them that often it's what this is telling me and then here with vms we are patching them a lot more often so I wonder, I wonder if there's a patch somewhere in the virtual machine code path. I wonder what it is. 
there's, there, it seems like that's what it is. There's like a patch that's happening somewhere in the virtual machine code path that is not happening in the virtual machine instance code path. Be interesting to know what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can find something quickly, skimming through. Okay. I think, I mean, I think that's a decent conclusion. I think like, um, in code And then this one, it might be that like our, like our VMs. Getting more HTTP. Our VM. Like so th there's definitely a bunch of um, virtual machine update calls. Um, did you say we didn't see the update on virtual? Yeah, we don't see. Yeah, we don't see it. So okay, so you you do see virtual machine updates. So yeah, I don't. Oops. That's a yeah, I, I'm not. I don't see it here. So it's this is so we're on. Uh, Cuberts. Oh, here's an update. Here we go. This is what. Which one is this? So we do capture it on one of these. This is the. This is the third one. So the batch of running 100 VMs. Oh, so this is with instance type. So we do get it on the third one, actually. We don't get it on the, the VM creation in the second one. Interesting. It is a timing issue. Oh, here's patch first machines too. Here we go. This is good. Yeah. Okay. So this job's got a lot more. Okay. So let, let's do this comparison then. Let's let's get that. Sorry. Let me go. Let's do and that. Let's this do this is hundred hundred VMs as well. Yeah, it should be. So let's let's take a look. Okay. Create events. Okay. So yeah, hundred hundred pod creates. That looks good. Um. Again, that create events. Okay. So I guess that makes so create events. This is. I guess this is um, the objects that we created. So we did like instance type objects, I'm thinking, and that's, that's what we're getting. And then we're getting VM and VMI. So that's is, why it's more. So I thought of that as differently. Uh, what I'm thinking is there are like cube events, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which record different state um, and, and raise like, uh, an object of type event. I thought that create is for those events. So like if you get, if you do K cube cutter get events, the, the yeah. response. Yeah, okay, that's, so that's what I was thinking, but I, what I was, what, um, oh, how do oh, you, yeah. How do you create, how do you like, how do you get, like, how do you trigger these? That's why I was thinking like, okay, maybe the reason there's more is because we're, we're, we're creating more objects. And then that's, that's doing the create of these events. I, I'm not sure. I, that's, that's what I would have in mind is that it had something to do with the number of objects that we're creating. Yeah. This is a new one, controller revisions. I don't know what this is. I don't know what controller revisions is. 
All right, create virtual machine instances. Oh, we don't even have this. <laughs> so this is a this is a new one. We have, we have not had this much, or we've not had this. Uh, not so this, this data is point. expected, right? Like because VM will create the virtual machine instances in on the right we are creating the the test is creating the virtual machine instance so we are missing that metric and on the left the recompile yep. yeah. right right okay so you, well so why but shouldn't we still see it though like even if the customers were creating the object maybe maybe it's it's, it's the timing maybe we're just no so I verified that the test test client does not um, the, the metrics generated from test client is not reported here. So on the right, you are seeing values where the test client is creating the virtual machine instance, the hundred of those, and then yeah. uh, on the left, that's why it's missing that. And on the left, the VM reconciler is creating the virtual machine instance based on that VM uh, template. And that's why you're seeing. Okay, so we wouldn't see create virtual machines over here. Create virtual machine count. Yes, yes correct. Okay. correct. And seeing okay. those to be exactly one is to one makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Cool. So we'll go, that's good. We get to see this. So let's see what else. Um, get virtual machine types count. So this new, this new, select four to one. Yeah. Okay. So we do four gets to one, three eight. That's kind of interesting. I'll make a note of this one. This is kind of weird. Um, in this new world, what's the difference between virtual machine instance and virtual machine preference? I'm sorry, um, instance type and virtual machine preference. I don't know what virtual machine preference is. I think it has to do. Maybe it's in the configuration. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't used it. So these are weird. Okay, let's see what else is interesting. Patch events, those, okay. Patch pods, patch pods. Huh, I don't think we've seen that one. A line huh. on the right, line 2220. Two, two, oh, no, we do have it, we have seen it, okay. Okay. Okay, that looks same. Okay, and then patch virtual machine instances is come comes out again very high. Yeah, and it seems like two is to one. Yeah. Wow, okay. Oh, I, I think one of the patch call that, um, that the VM controller makes is to remove the finalizer on the VMI once Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
Okay. Well, we, these are these would be good to enumerate to see what they are. Because yeah, we are quite a bit more. So this is this is about the same as what we saw over here. Patch. So it's a little bit more. Not not more. Okay. It's definitely interesting to go. Update again, um, even more. Yeah, it looks just like it increased even more. Okay, that's also really interesting. Okay, here's our update virtual machines. Now this is cool. So we've got, I mean, what is this, 10 to one? It's like a little less than 10 to one. Update virtual machines. I mean, I guess it would be, About 11 to one, it's a little less. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I guess we keep an eye on this one. I, I don't know this what this should be, or I don't know what a reasonable value would be. Reasonable value would be for that one. All right, well, let's look at these. So, VMI create to running. Oh, well, much better. These are this is probably like the lowest values I've seen. Huh. Do my creation running candy on? Wow. That's kind of interesting, I guess. So I wonder, um, I wonder why this is the case. That's I mean, that's much faster. I guess mostly faster. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have an idea of what is the workload type that is created? Like, is it exactly same? It should be. Uh, I mean, we can take a look. This is the um, we had it in there somewhere. I don't see it. It was from the discussion uh, with the here this one. Uh, and then his PR was yeah. Look, he's even singing here too. Uh, his PR was this one. Okay, what is the type? Okay, so he sets one CPU and 90 meg of memory. Hmm, I don't know what we, what do we set on the other one? I'm gonna have to open this up. So on the original, I believe it's a YAML file that we generated. So fine. Uh, no, no, that's not it. Um, okay, so we use new random virtual machine.
Hmm, I don't see it. Where? Um... New random VMI. Okay. One twenty. Okay, so it is more. It's almost well, it's a little bit more. All right, so I think we need to even these out. Then. I, I think that's maybe what's going on here. Yeah, and then um, we also need to even out all other things, right? Like if it is cloud in it or if it is um, like how many data volumes it has and stuff like that. It, it, I mean, any differences we should probably try to minimize. Yeah, this is, uh, let's see, so. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we need to adjust that. I, that that'll make a difference. Okay. All right. So some of these, then I, I still think these this makes sense, but I think those um, the creation times I would I don't explain it. We just have less magnitude that are allocated. Yes. Okay, well, let's, uh, yeah, this will be, this, this probably be an easy one to fix. All right, we'll keep, let's keep monitoring these. I'll give them a meeting of our meeting. Let's see if we can um, slowly chip away at what the patches are, what the updates are. And then these, I, I mean, these ones are also, what are the, um, what is it doing? Why does it take four gets to virtual machine instance types? Why is that required? Why is there four gets to virtual machine preferences scale? Um, and I had a question. Do we have a differentiation in the metrics if the get is served by cache or, or is the get against the API server? I don't think we do. Yeah, because yeah, like if this these gets are served from cache, then it's not as bad as these gets being a live API server uh, query, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, if you want to uh, add another bullet point there mm -hmm. down with the HS memory, that's another um, issue we can take. And yeah, I'll put these issues in my to-do list um, and see when I can find time to chase them. All right, so which metrics are... Uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. That was, that was a lot of good info we got out of that. Cool. All right, the last thing um, I did want to say was the, the mem usage that we talked about previously. Um, I wanted to see, see if, um, I don't know if Brian's here. Uh, I, see, I think it was Brian. Yeah, hey, Brian. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Good. I joined a little later, I had a clash, but so I joined in and um, see what was going on. Sure, no problem. Um, actually, um, before I go to the mem usage, uh, did you have anything about, um, have you found any information about the the cluster density test? I've seen some mail around, but. 
know so I yeah I, th I, th I think we found the owner of that cluster um so i think we're looking at maybe a reinstall of that cluster um i want to check with lubo from Qbert just first just to see if there's anything else we can do but it might be best just to try and reinstall it we're probably with something like openshift just to have a, a platform that's kind of easily maintainable um so i think that's what we're looking at the moment um because at the moment there are, those nodes are on centos 8 so it's 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 very difficult to carry out any changes on them um yeah so yeah i just need to check with the owner of the cluster and see if that's okay um and again check with six scale as well just to let you know as well okay that sounds good cool all right thanks for that okay then um let's go to the menu switch this was the um this is brought up uh you brought this up brian a few weeks ago about um how we kind of ended up catching the mem increase in our performance job um i i think um there was good you raised an issue we have we got some discussion i mean i think maybe for next steps on this one it might be worth having a mailing list thread and seeing what people's appetites are for having something that we i mean like i guess maybe two things it's like one of them is that our, the gate is kind of checking mem usage right now. Like we're kind of like when the job fails, I mean, pretty much the only failures we've had over the last like five months or so has been mem usage increases. Yeah. And so it is, I, I think like for the most part, it's pretty stable. And then that's just been the change. So there's, I, I, I think there's some value if, if we wanted to try and make this job something that runs on a regular basis and and had does reporting it might give us some feedback as to both the you know the mem usage which i think there's value in that and then also the um the actual performance if there are actual performance changes on, on a pr um and i think that like this this would be interesting as something that i think you know maybe we we can have a milling us thread and kind of Get the discussion going on that because I think there's I think both those things are valuable on a on a change that gets checked in. Yeah. Um yeah it's funny like I was talking to a few people about this and and like there is the view that the memory usage will increase over time as well as as things get more complicated or as as, as more features are added. So there is yeah. that side of things as well that memory usage will just increase naturally. Um there's that side of it as well but obviously you'd like to have some kind of view on where the memory usage is going as in like where the where the kind of the high memory usage is is, is happening but yeah i think a mailing list thread could be could be good to see what kind of interest there is from the community sure okay all right I can take that one. I can I can write it a little thread, and we can see what people's appetites are for this. And you know, I, I agree with you that mem usage, you know, it'll increase. And I think what we said previously is that it would be good to say, you know, that in this release it increased whatever whatever amount it is. And I think that would be um, whatever in a release note or something. And and this would be a great way to catch it. Like we, I, I really think like some changes we've seen, like oh yeah, we're clearly bumping the memory. Um, and there's nothing to say, okay, this is what it affects, you know, and, and this would be, I guess, a way that we could say, okay, here, it clearly affects the performance job. You know, let's, let's have a release note that that's what the change is. And maybe that'll, you know, we bubble that up to the release and say, okay, the keyboard uses this much more memory in the release. And, you know, this is what it, you know, it's just so people know it, how it could affect them. Yeah, where, where it comes in play big time is where people, or where users have their, their clusters near capacity or at capacity and yeah, yeah any kind of memory changes there could cause trouble yeah and i think i think even i think fixing like the other thing is that i maybe people might complain a little bit but it doesn't happen that often that these things come along and then 
the change the fix I, I think it's pretty it's pretty simple I think we we've documented it now like four times I think pretty easily you can show someone here's how you fix this and um and I think it's it'd be pretty simple so I I think I, I don't know I think there's a path forward for this I think that you know maybe we'll see what people says say about it but I, I think it's something yeah I I think definitely if, if if there's memory increase usage or if there's a memory usage increase in a release I think it's worth noting yeah. anyway just say that right. this is going to use X amount more memory than previous release. Because it's not every, it's not even every release that the memory use just goes up. I think you've seen it maybe in the monthly releases in Medicinas three times in the last 12 months or eight months. So that'd be eight or nine different releases. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll step thread on this. Let's see what people say. Maybe there's some interest in hearing that or, or not. Okay. Cool. Cool, guys. All right. I don't have anything else to do. Is there any more topics for folks? Here we go. No, from my side. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Yep. Thank you. Later. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.